Welcome back. There's been a slight easing of the country's unemployment rate, but analysts say that is purely due to some temporary jobs being created in the holiday season. Statistics South Africa is showing that the jobless rate eased from 25 point or 27.5% to 27.1% between September and December last year. So what does that actually translate to? From 2008, 23.2%, .2%, but look at that. The official rate now sitting at 27.1%. It essentially means that in an official sense, 6.1 million people are out of work. But the situation gets a bit more bleak when you consider uh, the expanded definition of unemployment, which includes those people who have been discouraged in terms of looking for work, that rate sits at 37%, and it becomes even more worrisome when you see that the number of people out of work, when you consider this particular bracket, 9.7 million people. So when we uh, look at certain sectors that really gained in terms of employment, Stats SA showing us those numbers today, uh, and some of the biggest gainers, the financial sector, 109,000 jobs created in that period between September and December last year. It seemed to have been a good uh, uh, quarter for private households as they lead up to Christmas, 65,000 jobs created there, manufacturing 48,000. But of course there were also job losses and Stats SA pulling up the numbers for us there as well. When we look at the uh, job losses, community services, 51,000 jobs lost. This is essentially government jobs when you look at it. Transport, 30,000 jobs have gone. Utilities, 22,000. And then the construction sector, not really a sector that's been performing well in terms of the economy, 21,000 jobs lost there. But now, here's the real worrisome stat, and this refers to people who are not in employment or in any form of education or training. And that bracket that they refer to is that bracket between 15 and 24 years of age. Uh, the rate there is sitting at 31.1%, 10.3 million persons not in employment, education or training. Remember that many of the commentators say that it's this bracket that certainly is a ticking time bomb. Well, Martin Ackerman is the Citadel senior economist to help us unpack the numbers. Martin, thanks very much indeed for coming in. Um, so we, we see a bit of a ease on the unemployment rate, but really I would think this is meaningless when you consider the fact that these jobs were just basically coming in as the holiday season approached. Yes, yeah, I think that's true. There's always a seasonal effect in the, the last quarter of the year. So one needs to take that into consideration. Uh, so a lot of those temporary jobs might be gone again as we speak at this point in time. Um, you know, we're in an environment where things are very bleak and dark, as you know. Um, and I think uh, if you want to focus on some of the positives, then at least for 2018, that's been quite a difficult year. You know, in total, we've added about 300, 350,000 jobs. Um, so that's about 2.2% growth for the year 2018. But the concern is still that, as you showed, a lot of that's been in the private household sector yep. and also in the informal sector. So what we really want to see in South Africa is that the formal sector is really starting to create more jobs. So there we had about 90,000 jobs for the year, but you know, that's insignificant. So that's uh, less than 1% growth. Now, if you compare that to an economy that's growing at 1.3 and a population that's growing at 1.7, it means that the rate at which we create jobs will always be behind. And that's why the number you showed there the past 10 years been from 23 to 27. Mm -hmm. So if we can't get into a stage where the economy is growing faster than the population, and we're creating faster, or the job growth is faster than what the economy is growing, the unemployment rate will keep on increasing over time. So yes, we had some positive growth. What I do take as a positive is the fact that we've seen some job creation in agriculture, mining and manufacturing, because that's really where we need to yep. see significant job creation going forward. That's the, the growth engine of the economy. But unfortunately, like I've said, most of that's uh, fourth quarter numbers, that's uh, seasonal impact. Yeah, I mean, you summarized it very well in saying that if the population continues to grow, in the way it does, and our growth rate doesn't match that, no. uh, you are going to have moving people forward. moving into the market who can't find jobs. It's interesting to see this trend with government. A couple of years ago, we've seen government actually creating jobs and playing a fractional role in easing that rate. Not the case anymore. Mm. We have got a government that's on an austerity drive, and they're actually losing jobs. Yeah, no, that's right. So I think over the past 10 years, the uh, private sector actually didn't create any jobs. Yep. 
uh, again, mining, manufacturing, agriculture, and those kind of sectors. We've seen a massive job creation in, in the public sector, so government. Um, but in this environment where we are right now, given all the pressure in terms of cutting back on expenditure, the wage bill, the salaries that we're seeing paying, um, we've actually seen a decline in government um, employment over the course of the quarter. So, you know, it's funny that's almost a positive because it do show that the government's got the uh, intent to actually cut back on expenditure, trying to sort out the fiscal challenges that we face and that we'll probably hear of more going into next week with the budget. Um, but what you want to see is that as government is reducing job creation, that the private sector is actually picking up that and more in terms of uh, creating further jobs in the economy. Uh, one would argue, and I certainly follow this view, that if you want a good, accurate measure of how the country's investment drive is going, looking at these numbers will probably tell you because the more investment we get, the more factories come up and the more jobs are created. Mm. Um, so it doesn't paint a very good picture for the level of investment in this country, does it? Yeah, again, you know, if you look at the manufacturing data, um, and forget about the short-term data like we've seen today, earlier today, yep. but manufacturing over the past five years basically went nowhere, um, mining the same. Uh, and as a result of that, we've seen a decline over the five years in employment in manufacturing and mining. And that is a direct uh, relationship to investments not coming into those sectors. So, you know, with the positive feedback last week on the mining in Darba, some of the promise that's being made in manufacturing and agriculture, hopefully those kind of investments can flow. Then in time, we will start to see that uh, job creation is coming back. And again, that will create the opportunity for government to actually then uh, reduce employment on their side because then there is a private sector that can employ the excess labor. Um, but you're right to say that at the moment, put the fourth quarter, that's a seasonal factor to the side. Yep. If you look at the whole year, it's, 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 it's not telling a story of, of massive investments flowing into those sectors at this point in time. On those massive investments, you spoke about the mining in Daba having some sort of a good feedback mm. uh, last week. It doesn't help an investor to see what's going on with the security of power when he's deciding whether or not to bring billions of rands into the country. Yeah, I think, you know, um, <laughs> last year this time, uh, President Ramaphosa came in and he said that he wants $100 billion. The commitment so far is north of 50. Yep. Um, so that is promising. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, we don't think any of that money will flow until we've got certainty on a number of things. ESCOM is one of those. And where we are right now with ESCOM becoming a bigger and a bigger issue, not only in terms of providing electricity, but also resolving the, the actual financial mm -hmm. uh, stability of the organization that is moving to the front in terms of foreigners' concern to say, well, you know, we need to be sure that either we can uh, rely on ESCOM or there's alternative sources, uh, the, the whole property issue, uh, and probably also what the outcome is going to be around the election. So there's a lot of hurdles right now that a lot of foreigners, and not only foreigners, local companies as well as saying, well, before we recommit investing back into manufacturing and mining capacity, those things first need to be uh, clarified and, and we need to get certainty on that. I, I, I want to wrap up by just bringing or highlighting that last bracket I showed on the chart, um, uh, which was a bracket of mm. age between 15 and 24 years of age. Uh, a frightening figure there on how many of those people in that bracket, and there we go there, mm. uh, do not find themselves in employment education or training and Martin uh, you can excuse someone for saying well that indeed is a ticking time bomb there exactly what's going right. wrong in that bracket so that's the, the what they talk about the population dividend yeah uh, so if a country anywhere in the world can actually um, position themselves correctly for that population dividend coming through you know that can be a major benefit to the economy so if you think about countries like the UK Japan they don't have that growing young um, population cohort uh, and as a result of that, the aggregate demand is slowing and they need to get other people into the country, migrants, to actually support the economic structure. Where if a country like a lot of the emerging Asian countries can get it right to actually provide education, skills development and eventually jobs for that growing 
uh, young population that can actually enable the country to actually fast track quite a lot in terms of the manufacturing revolution. So that is a ticking time bomb if we're not going to do anything about that. Fortunately, there is a lot of plans on the table, but yet again, you know, we need to get to a point where you start to see those plans being implemented. Like, for example, just to mention one, the YES initiative, yep. a youth unemployment scheme, those kind of things, if we can fast track that, in a couple of years it can definitely address that problem in, in, in that specific bracket. And indeed magnified. Martin, thanks very much Thank indeed very much. for coming in. Well, that was Martin Ackerman, Senior Economist at Citadel. Now, going back to that debate,